Hi friends, thanks for coming back today so we can read the next chapter of Charlotte's Web. In our last chapter, the goslings hatched. And there were seven goslings and uh, there was one egg though that didn't hatch. The goose let Templeton take the egg. We learned that um, Templeton doesn't have a very good reputation around the barn. He's not trusted by the other animals. Um, and we also felt like the author gave us a little hint, a little foreshadowing. Foreshadowing is the hints that the author gives us of something that's going to happen in the future. And that declaration that rotten egg can be a regular stink bomb, um, kind of a hint that that egg might be a, a problem later on. So we'll have to keep reading to see what happens with the egg. This chapter that we're reading today, chapter 7, is called Bad News. So, even the author's um, titles for her chapter, and not every author titles their chapters, but some authors do, a lot of times that title is a hint or a little foreshadowing of what is going to happen in that chapter. In the previous chapter, Summer Days, the author went into deep description of what summer was like on the farm to help us visualize it in our minds, to help us feel like we were there. And the chapter called Bad News it is obvious in this chapter we're going to get some bad news, right? So this is probably a good hint. This is where we're gonna find the big problem of our story. In the beginning chapters, we had a smaller problem. Wilbur was lonely. He was all alone. He didn't have friends. That's a small problem in the story. It's not the big problem. This chapter, we're going to get to the big problem of the story. And this is the problem that's going to carry through the rest of the story. This is the big problem that they have to solve. Wilbur liked Charlotte better and better each day. Her campaign against her campaign against the insects seemed sensible and useful. Hardly anybody around the farm had a good word to say for a fly. Flies spent their time pestering others. Cows hated them. The horses detested them. The sheep loathed them. Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman were always complaining about them and putting up screens. Wilbur admired the way that Charlotte managed. He was particularly glad that she always put her victim to sleep before eating it. That's a real thoughtful thing thing of you to do, Charlotte, he said. Yes, she replied in her sweet musical voice. I always give them an anesthetic so they don't feel the pain. A little service I throw in. So Wilbur's starting to change his mind about Charlotte and her diet. He's being a bit more accepting of her differences. As days went by, Wilbur grew and grew. He ate three big meals a day. He spent long hours lying on his side, half asleep, dreaming pleasant dreams. He enjoyed good health, and he gained a lot of weight. One afternoon, when Fern was sitting on her stool, the oldest sheep walked into the barn and stopped to pay a call on Wilbur. Hello, she said. Seems to me you're putting on weight. Yes, I guess I am, replied Wilbur. At my age, it's a good idea to keep on gaining. Just the same, I don't envy you, said the old sheep. You know why they're fattening you up, don't you? No, said Wilbur. Well, I don't like to spread bad news, said the sheep, but they're fattening you up because they're going to kill you, that's why. They're going to do what? screamed Wilbur. Fern grew rigid on her stool. Kill you, turn you into smoked bacon and ham, continued the old sheep. Almost all young pigs get murdered by the farmer as soon as the real cold weather sets in. There's a regular conspiracy around here to kill you at Christmas time. Everybody's in on the plot. Lurvy, Zuckerman, even John Arable. Mr. Arable, sobbed Wilbur, Fern's father? Certainly. When a pig is to be butchered, everybody helps. I'm an old sheep. I see the same thing, same old business, year after year. Arable arrives with his twenty-two, shoots the... Stop! screamed Wilbur. I don't want to die. Somebody save me. Save me. Fern was just about to jump up when a voice was heard. Be quiet, Wilbur, 
said Charlotte, who had been listening to this awful conversation. I can't be quiet, screamed Wilbur, racing up and down. I don't want to be killed. I don't want to die. Is it true what the old sheep says, Charlotte? Is it true they're going to kill me when the cold weather comes? Well, said the spider, plucking thoughtfully at her web. The old sheep has been around this barn a long time. She has seen many spring pig come and go. If she says they plan on killing you, I'm sure it's true. It's also the dirtiest trick I've ever heard of. What people don't think of. Wilbur burst into tears. I don't want to die, he moaned. I want to stay alive right here in my comfortable manure pile with all my friends. I'm going to breathe the beautiful air and lie in the beautiful sun. You're certainly making a beautiful noise, snapped the old sheep. I don't want to die, screamed Wilbur, throwing himself to the ground. You shall not die, said Charlotte briskly. What? Really? cried Wilbur. Well, who's going to save me? I am, said Charlotte. How? asked Wilbur. Well, that remains to be seen. But I'm going to save you, and I want you to quiet down immediately. You're carrying on in a childish way. Stop your crying. I can't stand hysterics. Mm. So we got our bad news, huh? I mean, that's pretty bad news. We can imagine how scared Wilbur is feeling right now, how terrified he is feeling at the idea of being killed in the wintertime. Um, and here we have Charlotte proving her loyalty, promising to save him. She doesn't know how yet, but she's made him a promise. And we'll see that her loyalty comes through because she keeps that promise. Now we have our big problem that's going to carry us through the rest of the story. We might encounter some smaller problems along the way um, because it is a chapter book. So chapter books tend to have more than one problem. But this is our big main problem in the story that's going to conclude at the end of the story. So as we continue reading, be on the lookout now. How, what solutions are we coming up for for this big problem? But also keep a look at what other smaller problems come into the story and how are they solved. Remember, when we're reading more complex books, we have to look for more than just one thing in the story. It's not a simple problem and solved. We have to look for more than one problem in our bigger books as we grow as readers. Thank you, readers, for coming to read with me today. It was a short chapter, but I'll see you tomorrow for Chapter 8.